In this video, I'm gonna let you know what you shouldn't do, and conversely, what you should do, and give you a whole load of tips that are gonna help you make the most of your time here in Italy. If you come here with an open mind, but an educated mind, and also a healthy respect, you're gonna have a far better time. So that said, let's get straight into it and let's have a look at Italian culture. Now firstly, don't expect everyone here to speak English. Things have improved a lot over the years, particularly in the towns and cities where the tourists go, but in the older generation, a lot of people still don't. It's well worth learning some local phrases and don't just kick off in English. Try starting with Parlo Inglese, which means, do you speak English? If you don't know anything else, at least it's something. It's much more respectful to do so and people are going to appreciate it. So just make a little effort, of course. And don't dress inappropriately in certain situations. If you're visiting churches, cathedrals, that kind of thing, it's important that you dress modestly. Yeah, you may see others not doing it, but it's always better to show respect. So cover your shoulders, cover your legs, and take off your hat. On the other hand, don't worry about feeling overdressed in any situation. Italians dress well. And if you're anything like me, you're going to feel like a mess most of the time compared with the average Italian. It may seem like a bit of a stereotype, but it is really true. Italians care, they look good, and they do it well. Now this really holds true for anywhere, but when you're making your itinerary, don't just go to the big hitter obvious touristy places like Venice and Rome or whatever. There's so much that this country has to offer. See the smaller places, see the less obvious places if you have time, the itinerary allows. It's going to be so much more rewarding, you'll really see more of the real culture. You have to keep in mind that Italy is incredibly diverse across its regions. This is actually a country that's only really been a country since 1861. Before that, it was a load of different city-states and kingdoms, and it really, really shows. And don't expect the best timekeeping here. Time can be, let's say, a little more flexible here. Don't always expect somewhere to open when it's supposed to, exactly on the dot. And don't expect everything to run on time. It's not always going to be the case. Just be a little bit more flexible, and most importantly, don't rush. Italian culture is built around food, family, friends, arts, literature, and fashion. This is the country that was the centre of the Roman Empire, the birth of the Renaissance and the hub of Catholicism. You really feel this rich history wherever you go, and you see and feel it in Italy's proud, confident, playful, vibrant and sometimes quite loud people. Step back, take your time, and enjoy it to the full. Now let's talk some practicalities about money. While most places take electronic payments nowadays, don't expect everywhere to. It's still useful to carry some cash and it's still commonplace to pay with cash in a lot of places. You may occasionally have problems in the odd cafe or taxi or shop or whatever. So do take some cash just in case for when you need it. There's ATMs everywhere, so it's never a problem getting cash wherever you are. And also there's currency exchange places if that's your thing. Now let's talk transport. With the amazing locations that Italy has to offer, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be visiting more than one of them. Firstly, let's take a look at the longer distance travel between towns and cities. If you're planning to visit some of the more isolated and rural areas, perhaps staying in a farmhouse known as a agroturismo, then chances are you're going to be driving yourself. The normal car hire companies are well represented here, so no problem on that front. But in peak season, don't expect availability all the time. You're probably going to need to reserve in advance, so be wary, be sure you do that. Also, don't think that Google navigation is always going to be your friend. Sometimes it's going to get it wrong, and you don't want to end up in a restricted traffic zone. Traffic penalty fines can be pretty high, so don't let that spoil your holiday. Certainly don't neglect train travel as a way to get around the country. Italy's got an extensive train network running the length of the country, connecting most of the places you probably want to go. Now, there's three different types of train. Now, the regional trains are the more local trains. They stop at more destinations. They're least likely to run on time, but they're also usually the cheapest. Also, on the regional trains, there's no assigned seating, and they can get pretty busy, so you probably want to rush on if you're getting on one. Then, there's the intercity trains. Now, the intercity trains, they are faster, they stop at less destinations, they're kind of the middle ground. Then, 
you got the real fast trains, often known as the Freckia trains. These ones always run on time. They go up to 300 kilometers an hour. There's always assigned seating and you really need to book them in advance. They've got reserved seats and you'll get them a lot cheaper as well when you're booking them in advance. So when you're booking in advance or even just when you're looking up timetables, you can use the Tren Italia website. I'll put a link in the description below. Now this is super useful and it's also great for getting discounts. So if you're using the fast trains like the Freckia trains, then you'll see a lot of discounts like weekend discounts, family discounts, which can be absolutely superb. So it's well worth looking at in advance. Give it a few weeks before you travel if you can, pick a time and get a bargain. You can often even travel first class for less than you pay for second class. It's kind of crazy, but well worth looking at this. But when you're looking for a shorter distance, it's typically worth not taking the Freckia fast trains. You'll pay a lot more. It might be slightly quicker than the regional trains, but not that much to warrant the price difference. Check it out, of course, see what you can get. But typically for the shorter distance, you'll want to take a regional train. Just as I say, with the regional trains, don't necessarily expect it to be right on time and you can expect it to probably be quite busy. So there's always that to consider as well. You don't have the assigned seat. But there's still many routes not serviced by the train network, so don't assume you can get anywhere by train. You're gonna to have to use bus for those kind of routes. Now, they're managed at a regional level, unlike the trains, so there's no central website you can go to for all information. Your only way is gonna to be to Google, go to websites like Rome to Rio, find out that way, and then go to the individual sites for the individual providers, buy your ticket locally if you need to. But it's still a good way to get around when you have to use it. There's also long distance coach services like Flixbus available, along with some local operators. So that can be a good alternative and a cheap way of getting around the country. Of course, Italy is surrounded by water, so there's also a possibility to use ferries to get around, particularly if you go into islands. But there's no general rules for this. Check online and find what's best for you. Is this video helping you so far? If so, hit that like button. It'll really help me and it'll help others to find this video too, which will help them as well. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. There's plenty more travel tips, stories and advice coming from around the world. Now let's talk about travel within towns and cities. Don't expect to just be able to flag down a taxi like you might do in some places. They don't work on that kind of system here. They'll just go straight past you. What they do have is dedicated taxi ranks. So you really have to find one, either that or call up a taxi company. Now, you can easily find them though. They're on Google Maps, everything's usually up to date, so just Google Maps search it and you'll be fine. Taxi apps like Uber can also be used, but it really depends where you are. You're gonna to have to Google it to find out what works in your area or city. Certainly don't neglect the bus network when you're here. It's a pretty good option for getting around a lot of Italian cities. You can't necessarily expect them to be right on time, but they do serve a lot of destinations and depending where you are, they can be pretty frequent too. You can pay for your ticket on the bus and what you'll see is little ticket machines on the bus, although the actual system really depends where you are, how it works. On some, it'll take money, usually two euros at the time of recording this, and you'll actually get issued a paper ticket, nice and simple. Other times it'll be electronic only, you'll have to use your bank card, and there'll be no physical ticket. You can also use machines on the street, but they're kind of hard to come by. In my experience, you don't often see them. And when you do, they're kind of typically out of order. But supposedly you can save money if you do manage to find a working one, you buy your ticket in advance, and it's maybe 150 instead of two euros, but good luck with that. See what you spot. And don't forget to use the metro if there is one, if you're in one of the bigger cities. Cities like Milan have excellent extensive metro systems. It's cheap and super convenient to get around. You'd be a fool not to use it. So in Venice in particular, there's a lot of water, of course. There's no roads to drive around. So you have the passenger ferries instead, the Vaporetti. They're a great way of getting around there and much, much cheaper than going around in a gondola. Really, avoid the gondola unless you're really, really trying to impress that special someone. It will cost you a fortune. Now, of course, there's other ways to get around the cities or towns. Bikes are really quite popular with the locals. You'll often find them riding along the pavements, usually combined with using a mobile phone. But the thing is, there's not much infrastructure for bikes here. There's not really much in the way of cycle lanes, unfortunately. But it's still a popular way to get around. What you also see is, of course, the e-scooters. And you can hire those out from the usual companies if that's your kind of thing. Now, food here is a massive thing in Italy. Italians really care about their food and it's absolutely superb. There is no way you're gonna be coming here and not enjoying it on your trip. So that said, here's some tips on this important pastime.
Now a common question that I always have wherever I go. Can you drink the tap water? Well, yes and maybe not. Yes, you can. It's perfectly safe. In most places, it depends where you are. If you're in a really rural area, then there could be a problem. But most places, yes, it's safe. Does it taste good? Well, often not. It can be heavily chlorinated. And when you're in one of those places, you probably want to avoid it just because the taste is not good. But of course, bottled water is readily available. Although, of course, as usual, bad for the environment with the plastic. But don't assume that you have to keep buying bottled water. You don't. In the cities, there's loads of public, old-style water points. They're perfect. You can go around, you can fill up your own reusable bottle with fresh water every time. Now, a quick note on breakfast. Don't expect a great big breakfast. It's really not the done thing here. Italian breakfast is always pretty quick and simple. It's usually just a bit of bread, a coffee, maybe a cake, but pretty bare bones. So if you're not expecting that, you could feel a little let down. And of course, in a bigger hotel chain, there's probably going to be a lot more on offer, some kind of buffet, that sort of thing. But as standard, it's really not the way things are done here. And here's another really silly little thing that I was actually burnt by myself the first time I ever came to Italy. I went into a cafe, I wanted a coffee, and I asked for a latte. Now, latte in Italian simply means milk, so I was just given a glass of milk. If you want a coffee with milk, ask for a cafe latte. Don't make that mistake and don't look like a fool. Don't expect restaurants to be open between lunch and dinner. It's really a thing here that a lot of places, they open for lunch, then they close down about three o'clock, and they stay closed for the afternoon until dinner time, be that six o'clock, seven o'clock, sometimes even 7.30. So you really have this kind of window of opportunity to go to a lot of the better places. Now, there are kind of more fast food style grab and go places where you can always get something to eat. Maybe one of those square slices of pizza, that kind of thing. But if you want to go to a good restaurant, you've got to go to it at the right time. And this point rings true for a lot of places you can go in the world, certainly the ones frequented by a lot of tourists. Don't eat at the tourist places. You're not going to get the best quality and you're going to pay a lot more for it. You're much better going off to a more locally place. And of course, in this world, we have so many options to find those places. Just look on TripAdvisor or any of the other sites and you'll find the best places to go and eat. And I guarantee you, it's not often going to be in the tourist centers. But certainly don't expect that you can just walk into a popular restaurant. You really can't here. If you just turn up on a busy lunchtime or a busy dinner service, you're going to be out of luck in a lot of places. I've been burnt by this one countless times. You think you can get in somewhere, everywhere, reservations only. So do reserve in advance. Some you can reserve online, particularly using apps like The Fork. Others, there's no online system. You actually have to phone or maybe go there in person. It's the only way to guarantee it. So don't get let down and run out of time and not be able to get to the restaurant you really want to get to. Prepare in advance and make that booking. And some other little things. Don't put cheese on a seafood pasta. Italians have some pretty strict rules when it comes to flavour combinations and you'll look pretty silly if you do that and it probably won't taste very good either. And don't use a knife for your spaghetti. Don't chop it all up. Show some respect for the pasta. Just twirl it around your fork and eat it like that. You don't even need a knife if you're eating a spaghetti dish. So something else that I always want to know when I'm traveling to a new place, what's the rules on tipping? Well, here in Italy, don't expect that you have to. It's not expected here. So a lot of places that you go to, they'll have a kind of fixed service charge called a coperto. So this is basically a charge for sitting down in the place. It usually ranges from about one euro fifty to three euros at the time of filming, although it can be more in a more fancy place. But this pretty much replaces the tip. Now, you can also get a service charge put on top of that in certain places, maybe in more top-end restaurants, but basically the Corperto covers it. So depending on how much you eat or drink there, it can end up being a pretty generous tip or it can end up being pretty good value. But expect that. And also, if you don't want nasty surprises, make sure you find out what it is before you sit down and order. That way, you know what to expect. On the other hand, some places don't actually include a coperto or service charge. So in those kind of places, then tipping is actually appreciated. And if you had particularly good service, maybe you want to leave something in that kind of place. Now, you may notice an espresso bar. The locals will just be standing at the bar and they'll have their coffee there at the bar. Now, this isn't just a fast drink the coffee and get out thing. It's actually also a way to avoid the coperto. So if you have it there, you have a cheap coffee and you don't get the service charge for sitting down. Makes sense, right?
Now a quick note on shopping. Just because some people make this mistake, don't expect the designer brands and labels to be cheaper just because it's Italy and they come from Italy and people care about the fashion here. That's not the case. These brands usually have standardized pricing. You're gonna pay the same as you're gonna pay anywhere. Italy's a safe country to visit overall. Don't expect that you're gonna run into the mafia or anything stupid like that. That's just a stereotype here. But as with anywhere in the world, particularly in places heavily frequented by tourists, there'll be a lot of people around and there'll probably be the odd bad apple who's gonna be preying on that. So there are pickpockets around. Be careful, be alert, and don't fall for that. Don't let it spoil your holiday. And that's it for what I have to offer on what not to do in Italy. This is an incredible country. There's amazing sights and wonderful people. You're gonna have a fantastic time here. Be culturally aware, be prepared, and enjoy your trip. Hope to see you next time.